Well, howdy, hey, hi, hello. Welcome to this episode of the Bionicle Inspiration Series. Today we've got an extra special treat for you because today I'm going to be focusing on uh, something that someone reached out to me and said, hey, this this would be cool if you could do an episode about it. And I was like, that would be cool. Let's do it. So basically a bunch of builders came together for a uh, an article that was posted on the website New Elementary and it was talking about using uh, sort of older Bionicle pieces in some more you know modern mocks and just kind of playing around with them, seeing all the ways that you can get these awesome piece usages out of them. Uh, the website New Elementary um, is, is a fantastic website. But basically, it's kind of their shtick is that whenever new sets come out or new pieces come out, they talk about the pieces, they show you ways that you could use them. They sort of talk about the geometry of the pieces, the different ways they could connect to things, other pieces that kind of work well with them, that sort of thing. So it's a fantastic website. Uh, I've met the creators of it as well. They're lovely people. And um, yeah, by all means, check it out. I'll have a link in the description to it below. It's um, very much worth your time. It's a great little website. Uh, and I'm not going to show you everything that's on the article because that kind of defeats the purpose of it, doesn't it? So the link is also in the description to the article. So please do read it. But I wanted to talk about the specific mocks uh, that are featured in this article because they're really cool. And I'm not going to talk about all of them either. So you, you, you better check it out. You better check it out. Anyway, that's it for New Elementary, that's it for that. Let's start diving into these different mocks and we'll talk about ways that people are using these older pieces in some very clever ways, really focusing on that term NPU, nice part use. Uh, and hopefully it gives you some ideas of how you could use these pieces or just, uh, I don't know, gets your, your mind thinking about different ways that you could use other pieces in more unique or clever ways. So let's dive into it, shall we? The very first mock we've got today is by Pahotoran and this is called Lifebringer. So... This specific mock uses this piece here. It is called Bionicle Matoran Chest Torso. So this came in a few different sets. I know it came on Sidorak, and it also came on a bunch of the Metro Matoran as well. And I'm sure it's appeared in a bunch of other different sets and different things here and there. But that's sort of the, I guess, like the main places that you could find it. It's a, it's a nice little piece, that's for sure. I think it's really unique seeing it used in kind of an entirely different way. The fact that he's using it as sort of like uh, this kind of tribal looking mask uh, that sort of makes up the, the bulk of this head design here. Really unique and really interesting. So let's, let's specifically talk about that. Looking at how he's attached different pieces to the mask, naturally that torso piece has three sort of uh, you know, circular holes through it. And so he's attached those different teeth pieces onto it there to make it look like, I don't know, sort of like a mouthy, you know, jaw of sorts. And, you know, those are different sort of dots pieces that I think very much look like that of teeth. Of course, there's a bunch of other teeth pieces you could use, but I think those work well because, I don't know, it kind of looks like something that might be painted onto the mask, or maybe it is actually the sort of more cartoonish face of this character. But, uh, I don't know, to me, it's 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 sort of more painted details um, kind of thing. So, I, I don't know, that's how I see it at least. Uh, and I guess you could kind of extend that across to other sort of ornate flourishes or like wooden carvings that could be in this mask when you look at those wing pieces that are put at the very top there. So naturally that torso piece has sort of holes in the sort of tippy top of it. Uh, and he's just sort of inserted those wings into those holes. So I think it's a really clever idea to, to look at uh, any piece really and see if there are just sort of natural like crevices or holes or little bits that you could insert pieces into. Are there unique parts that fit very nicely? Do you have to kind of jam some of them in there? I guess it's kind of up to you whether you want it to be a little bit more legal or illegal. You know, if you put a little bit more stress on it, it might not be uh, up to your fancy. But it's certainly a unique way of, I don't know, adding new life to pieces. Some of the older Bionicle masks specifically have a lot of unique holes or, or sort of crevices in them that you can very easily insert different pieces, whether it's like lightsaber rods or all sorts of different things. So by all means, take a look at your pieces, see if that is something you can do, because I think it's very clever. And you know, like we see here, it works uh, exceptionally well. And he's also done it there with those tusks that are also coming out of this mask. So a lot of really unique ways that he's, uh, that he's used this here. And I think that's, um, yeah, I think that's really, really cool. So fantastic idea to do that. And I also love seeing all these different sort of like leaf pieces and like a flower crown almost around this wooden mask here. It's uh, it's very clever and it's certainly very vibrant, especially because this mask has such this beautiful contrast up against this sort of like gray metallic body of this creature here. Uh, and I kind of like that idea. I think it's a sort of unique take on the idea of a bionicle having a mask. The idea that there's this sort of metallic creature that uh, is a little bit more sort of frail and um, maybe not of this world and doesn't really get in touch with nature, but they put this sort of tribal mask on and it gives them jungle powers and almost sort of 
you know, changes the way that they look and yeah, then, you know, maybe they have those, those, um, vines sort of wrapped around themselves. That's maybe a part of their powers or it's just sort of decoration that they've put on. But yeah, I like that. Just a sort of different take on it that the mask sort of has a life of its own and sort of, uh, I don't know, almost adds to the visual look of the character. I think that's uh, very clever. So a unique way of kind of changing up that concept there. Um, I, I, yeah, I like that a lot. Final little detail that I like about this is the weapon, uh, the choice to just use those uh, brown um, sort of connector parts like that to sort of form this wooden staff, but then to attach uh, the that sort of grey tooth piece at the top there kind of makes it look like a sort of sharpened stone that he sort of wedged into uh, a sort of wooden stick of sorts. And then he's used that vine, or in this case a green rubber band, which would have probably come on the older Borok sets, more on that later, uh, and just sort of wrapped it around there like he's just, you know, got a really sturdy vine and used it to sort of attach uh, that... Um, that stone to the weapon so that it can become a weapon. I think that's awesome. I think it's a really very simple way of doing it, but uh, yeah, there's something that looks very sort of, I don't know, fitting for that and fits the aesthetic of this mock. And um, yeah, it's just really clever and just, you know, really just wrapping around a, a one, maybe two of those rubber band pieces there. I, I, I think it's really cool. I think it's just a clever way of doing that. It's a very simple weapon, but I think it goes a long way. So really cool. So I love your work here, Patron. Let's move on to the next mock here, which is also by Patron. And or Pahatu Ron, Pahatu Tron, I don't know how to say your name, I'm very sorry. Uh, and it's called Bassador. So uh, I wanted to cover the other mock that he did in this because it uses a, an entirely different bionicle piece. So this is a piece that uh, very specifically came on Pahatu Nuva. Uh, and this piece here is called Bionicle Toa Nuva Climbing Claw slash Cordan Ball Half. I don't know what Cordan Ballhalf is. I've never, never heard that be associated with this piece before. But uh, yes, that's the name of that piece if you're playing at home and you're looking for that part there. But uh, yeah, uh, I think it's been used on these uh, on this mark here very, very exquisitely, personally. I love that they've been used, obviously, for the feet here. I think it makes yeah, a nice sort of like clawed foot design for this robot. But it's nice to see it also being used on the head as well. They sort of form this beautiful line that sort of draws your attention towards that big sort of sinister red eye. And the fact that it's kind of covered up uh, sort of the, the main kind of connecting element piece with um, you know, other pieces and things, it almost makes it look like an entirely different piece, which I think is really cool because it's nice to see that one piece being used on this mock in multiple different ways, but yet they almost look like completely different pieces. So you get this beautiful sense of unity, so, you know, the textures and the shapes of it uh, across the mock on different places. So there's a bit of consistency throughout it. But you also get this beautiful sense that the piece hasn't just sort of been spammed all over it. He's used it in a way and covered it up in a way that it, um, yeah, it looks almost a little bit different in a sense. So I think that's cool. And, you know, that's certainly something you could do yourself if you're looking to kind of part spam a piece onto a mock. Can you kind of cover up sections of that piece with other parts so that, uh, I don't know, it, 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 you still get that, that essence of part spamming where it can kind of create this sort of maybe smooth flowing texture or just have a bit of consistency or unity on the mock. But yet, at the same time, it looks a little different there. I don't know, and that's really clever. Some of the stuff I like about this mock are the fantastic weapons. Uh, this sort of radar dish using just your, your typical sort of system dish element there. But, you know, it gets the job done. And this cool-looking Gatlin gun here as well. You know, it looks fantastic. And, yeah, I just uh, I kind of like the general sort of silhouette of this mock, of having the, the weapons up top there and this sort of hunched over head with these two sort of thick-looking legs like that. It's, uh, it looks cool. It looks like a death machine robot sinister bad guy kind of look it's cool it's really cool uh, i also quite enjoy this very slight little detail here of adding these lego system like pistol gun pieces uh onto the um so that sort of stronius armor piece that's on the back there uh it sort of neatly kind of flows into the head there it's just a little subtle detail but i think it um i think it really works to me it kind of looks like some sort of i don't know just mechanical detail or like tubing that uh you know, it's just a part of the sort of mechanics of this um, this robot here. So, I don't know, in my opinion, I think it's a, a lovely little addition there that um, really does go a long way. A little subtle stuff that gets the job done, you know? So, yeah, really nice way of uh, including these pieces here in a, in a very unique way. Love your work. Let's move on to the next mock now. This is by Eo Okonunen, and this is called Mammoth. Because, you, you know, it's a mammoth. Uh, I, I love this. I adore this. Very system-heavy mock, but it does use this bionicle piece in a very clever way. So this uh, bionicle piece, of course, is very famously from a lot of the different Rakshi sets, uh, but it is more specifically known as a bionicle Rakshi back cover with grooves. So if you want to look one up on Bricklink, that's the name of it there for you. 
So yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a great piece. I've seen it being used in a whole bunch of different ways. And um, Ayo has actually posted another mock on um, the article there, using it in a very, very nice way. So be sure to check that out. I'm not going to show you here. Go check out the article. It's a good article. It's worth the read. So yeah. Regardless though, when we look at, uh, you know, images of mammoths, they do have this sort of very specific sort of uh, kind of curvature to their face that sort of flows down into the trunk. And I think that's been perfectly illustrated here using this piece. I think here this is a more sort of like subtle example of a nice part use on a mock. Just, I don't know, there's something about it that just sort of perfectly captures the shaping of it. It's not necessarily anything like groundbreaking or super unique, like, you know, using a torso piece and wrapping it with all these other different pieces for a, you know, a helmet or a mask or, you know, what we saw before with, you know, very sort of clever sort of shaping that uh, formed around the head there. This one is just sort of, I don't know, it's 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 quite unassuming, but it gets the job done, you know, and it perfectly uh, matches the sort of curvature of uh, a mammoth's face and kind of leading down into the trunk there. So, I don't know, don't be afraid to be a little bit more subtle with your nice part usages. Sometimes it could just be something like this where the shaping is just perfect and it just neatly works in with the rest of the mock. And it doesn't have to be anything like groundbreaking or awe-inspiring, but it works, you know? So, I don't know, that really grabs me. I think that's awesome. Some other awesome stuff on this mock is the beautiful little stand that goes with it. Uh, all these, um, you know, lightsaber rod pieces and axles and things being used as sort of like, you know, like plants and all sorts of different things like reeds and stuff like that. Uh, and then the fact that the base sort of neatly transitions and just a little bit of water there. Just sort of the, the tail end there having those trans clear um, plates there. I like that a lot. Just sort of it gives you this sense that I don't know maybe he's by like a watering hole or a lake or a river or whatever, uh, and um, yeah, he's about to get a drink or something. It's just a little subtle detail. I think it goes a long way. And I always like a good sort of base or a stand for a mock. I think it's just a nice way of kind of rounding it off and adding a bit of context. It's very nice. And I think this is a really nice example of it too. Also, the way that he's uh, achieved the sort of woolly fur texture of this mammoth here, you know, using some of these larger kind of curved slope uh, pieces here to really kind of mimic the, the sort of like flowing down uh, look of, of mammoth fur in that sense. I think it's really cool. And uh, also including a bunch of these grill tile pieces along the side there, which do give it that sort of hairy texture in a sense. So yeah, a little subtle stuff there, but uh, it really perfectly illustrates the general sort of shape of the mammoth and uh, kind of very nicely illustrates the fur as well. So yeah, cool to see just some... Uh, you know, clever designs there that perfectly illustrate it and, and make a very accurate looking model here. So really nicely done. Let's move over now into this mock, which is by Ivan Martinov, and this is called Red Brawler. So the piece that's being used specifically here is a, a nice little piece. It came on a bunch of the Toa Mata, like Tahu and stuff. Uh, and this one is called Bionicle Ball Joint 5x7 Arm with Dual Axle Hull at 90 Degrees. Not a very exciting and unique name, but uh, that's what it's called. So, yeah, it's a, it's a nice looking piece. It's a good one here. And again, I think this is another sort of subtle example. You know, it was intended as an arm piece on some of the original Bionicle sets, but here it's being used as a leg piece. It's still a limb. You know, it's essentially what it was intended for, but it still looks nice. You know, it's, it's again, it's nothing groundbreaking, but it gets the job done. And some of these older Bionicle pieces, which is the bulk of the ones we're looking at today, they have beautiful textures to them. They're very sort of like mechanical and like industrial in a sense. And they have a lot of sort of like greebles and rivets and uh, like pistons and different things on them and all that. So yeah, there's something about them that just fits so perfectly with a more sort of um, stripped back, like unarmored robot of sorts. And that's kind of what's happening here. You know, there's elements of this mock that have that gray to them, which is more sort of like exposed mechanical details. And then there's this red armor over the top that's sort of like a protective shell that's going over the top of that, you know? So it's great to see that piece being used to, to really kind of perfectly illustrate the sort of like under armor uh, or, or sort of like raw mechanical details of this mock here. It's, uh, I think, really cool. So I, I love seeing that here, just uh, really perfectly taking the already existing textures of this piece and they're just very neatly inserting it into this mock to uh, convey the original message. It's really cool. Plus to the angle of it as well, giving it this, uh, yeah, just, I don't know, nice sort of uh, unique shape to the leg design. It's very nice. Some of the other very nice little details on this mock are the arms, uh, including that sort of red jet engine piece there to get this uh, just this really nice shape to the arm in general. It's, uh, yeah, it's quite nice. Uh, and nice to see how it sort of neatly inserts into those mixel joints as well. It's pretty cool. Uh, I also quite enjoy the head design as well, using this red engine piece and uh, sort of possibly illegally inserting a uh, what appears to be a white uh, 1x2 lift arm into that to sort of form an eye. 
yeah, it gets the job done. I think it works really well. So, um, yeah, really unique head design, really unique leg design, really unique arm design. Just a pretty cool mock. I also quite enjoy the inclusion of some of these, like, black stripes, whether that's on the feet, the uh, arms, the, the sort of waist there, or kind of on the sort of shoulders or the top of the chest. I don't know if these are sort of like custom stickers or I, I don't think that they belong to any specific set. What I think he's done is he's taken some pre-existing black stickers and he's cut them up with scissors and um, you know, cut them into sort of rectangular strips and then put them onto the mock here to give it that little, I don't know, extra bit of oomph. And yeah, you could argue that's, you know, not exactly purist because you're cutting stickers. That's that's. You, know, you could argue it's just as bad as cutting Lego pieces, but I don't know, stickers are a, a different medium in that sense. But hey, there's nothing wrong with doing that if, if that's something you want to do, is you know, cutting up stickers into unique shapes and sizes and then putting it onto your mock to, to fit a specific need or purpose. You know, Whether it's just, I want a black stripe across this, or I want this cool triangle in this specific colour just to add a bit of pop or whatever. It's something to consider, and I certainly think it um, I don't know, works really well here. So... Nice little details there, and uh, a more unique way of approaching stickers, so that's pretty cool. Let's move over to the last mock now. This is by Mitch Henry, and this uh, this is called The Seven, Katayama. So the specific piece that's being used here is the Bionicle Borok windscreen, 4x5x7 with marble trans clear pattern, although in this sense it's not with any sort of marble trans clear pattern, it's just a dark blue one, but it is that Borok windshield, 4x5x7, blah, 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 blah which is a cool piece. And of course it comes from the Borok, but it also does appear in a variety of other sets and in a variety of other colors, whether they're marble, trans clear, or all sorts of different things. And of course Mitch covers that in more detail in the article, so head over there and check it out. But also, he has another mock in there. You should also check that out. Again, the article is very much worth the read. Uh, anyway, so this mock here is fantastic, absolutely awesome. It's actually from another collab as well, but uh, still worth noting, and it does use that piece in a fantastic way. And I think it's perfect for like that sort of samurai chest armor. Just googling different images of samurai armor and samurais in general and stuff like that, there is a very sort of specific shape to that sort of chest armor, and I think it perfectly captures that. So very, very nice part use there indeed. And, you know, nice to see the textures of it matching up with the head and the other parts of the body as well. It's, uh, I think, pretty cool. I also quite enjoy the inclusion of some of the armor pieces, specifically on the lower legs and the upper arms. The textures on those printed uh, CCBS shells there are absolutely perfect for capturing uh, kind of the look of samurai armor. Like with this picture here specifically, there's a very similar sort of look and feel to that. Plus two, the inclusion of those rubber band elements there also seems kind of fitting. You, know, you can kind of see little elements of that in these pictures as well. So um, yeah, a lot of fun little details there that I think perfectly capture the sort of look and aesthetic of a samurai. So really, I, I think that's awesome. And um, Mitch has also done a really good job with the inclusion of those uh, dark bluish gray tread pieces, whether that's on the um, the torso there or on the shoulders. Again, looks exactly like samurai armor. It's uh, yeah, very well executed. So yeah, that's it for a few of these different mocks here using some very, very nice part usages. Again, I urge you, please, do check out the article over on New Elementary. Fantastic website, and the article was also a good read, so be sure to check it out. And also, be sure to check out all of these different builders and the other mocks that they've built. There's links in the description below, so if you want to check those out, please head there and you'll find them there. And yeah, maybe leave a comment on their posts that they know what you think of what they've done. I'm sure they'd love to hear it. In fact, I know they'd love to hear it, so please, do so. Also in the description are links to my own social media, so you can see some of the cool stuff that I've got going on over there. Uh, and also, while you're in the description, there is the submission email for the Barnacle Inspiration series. So if you want to see some of your own mocks, or you've got a cool idea like this, where you're like, hey, me and some friends made a cool thing, can you feature it on the show? By all means, I will. Uh, and also, speaking of submission email, it, it is on your screen right now, I can't remember if I said that before, but it's here again, in case, uh, in case I did show it before. Uh, but the next episode should be Phantom of Mox episode. So, hey, now is certainly the time to submit your stuff because I'll pick, uh, you know, good, good whack of submissions. I'll put them in that episode and uh, we'll see what's what. So, hey, if you want to see a mock on it, now's the time. Submit your mocks. Anyway, that's it for the Bionicle Inspiration series. We'll see you next week with a Phantom of Mox episode and then maybe some other cool stuff after that, for sure. Anyway, thank you very much. Happy building and bye for now.